So there's a small town in Indiana rooted in holiday history. Many of you have heard of it and many of you have seen it for yourselves. Santa Claus, Indiana is known for exactly what its name implies. Saint Nick and the magic mm -hmm. he represents. So the GMK team took a trip to the town to see where it all comes from and how it lives on today. Some people have never heard of the town and sometimes they just see the sign on the highway and they're like, we got to go there. So Kathleen, I think most people have heard of Santa Fe. Uh, Santa Fe is a totally different thing. Tell us a little bit about the original name of the town. Well, the town was originally called Santa Fe with two E's. Uh, and when it got big enough to have a post office, it requested a post office, but they were denied because the postmaster general said there's already a Santa Fe. So there was some confusion on the name even way back then. This room uh, being the room where they can learn about the history of the town. Of course, it's fun for people to run the trains. Everybody likes the trains. So tell us about this popular attraction right here. Yes, the trains are very important. The children and the young at heart all love trains. Um, the Polar Express, of course, is appropriate. The Christmas train lights up, so they are, like you said, super popular. Yeah. The three sound effect buttons make it funner, but the train that's really special is the train that's on the still track. That train is from 1937. Oh, wow. It was purchased here in the town of Santa Claus when Santa Claus had a Lionel City train store. There's a collection of trains, some Polar Express trains, Mickey Mouse trains at the Santa Claus. Um, can you talk, kind of talk to me about some of these different Mickey Mouse trains and Polar Express trains that are on the walls? Is there a story with that in Santa Claus? Sure, so the, the top row here are trains from the original owner of Santa Claus land, Mr. Lewis Cook, whom I mentioned before. This blue comet is very popular with train enthusiasts because it's kind of a unique and rare um, train to have. Everybody is familiar with the Polar Express. The hobo on top of the car is a favorite part of that. And then this Mickey Mouse train is super popular with kids. In the uh, winter season, Santa is in his office on the weekends and that's a wonderful uh, visit for kids to spend some time with Santa and the families as well. Well, it's so fascinating to me, Kathleen. Talk to me about how this happened. So we're in Santa's office and he's got this whole stack of letters. How do they even get here? How do people even know to send them here? You mentioned Russia and Ukraine and Poland. Sometimes they say North Pole. And so most post offices will direct letters to us if they're for Santa to read. And then of course we have elves that help in all ways. We've already answered over 7,000 and we'll do 25 to 35,000 this year. Oh my goodness. Some of the letters will make you tear up and some of them will make you laugh out loud. Dear Santa, I'm writing you from Poland because I had to leave my home in the Ukraine. Oh my goodness. Dear Santa, please bring something for my mommy. She says she's lost her waist. Maybe she would like a new one. <laughs> so, you know, they're, they just range from hilarious to heartbreaking. In 1914, the postmaster James Martin started answering children's letters. And he continued to do that. And then he enlisted help from um, his family, friends, the Santa Claus Jim Yellig and the Santa Claus American Legion and pretty soon it became a huge undertaking. Well this is a much more famous Jim than I am. Uh, Jim Yellig, the story of the original Santa Kathleen, correct? That's correct. So Jim Yellig was in World War I. He was in the Navy and at Christmas time they needed someone to portray Santa Claus and somebody said, well, there's a guy in the steam room that's from Santa Claus. And so they got Jim to do that. And then he made a vow that if he made it home alive from the war that he would portray Santa. And he fulfilled that uh, vow and has been Santa, had been Santa at Santa Claus Land and even Holiday World and in the town for 54 years. He's in the International Santa Claus Hall of Fame and they reference him at all the Santa schools around the country. So he's a very special person. He, he seems to be an absolute legend. There are people who come in today who are in their 40s, 50s, 60s who say, I have a picture of me sitting on his lap. And the background that's here in this exhibit is the original background 
that was behind Santa Jim whenever he was at Santa Claus Land. So many children come back and they say, yes, that's the background that's in my picture. My dad uh, grew up in this area and I spent a lot of time in Santa Claus and at Santa Claus Land as a child. I love the history. It's, it's a rich and wonderful history. I think it's joyful whether it's June or whether it's December. That was really such an incredible trip, and I think the history is something that um, is so interesting to talk about because it can get overlooked when we just focus on Holiday World yeah. or a fun visit, but this this is a town that really buys into its story. Yeah, I was super surprised and impressed by the international reach of it. Mm. Like mm -hmm. when they were showing letters, current letters, from different parts of the world that are going through struggle right now, mm -hmm. uh, some of them were funny. Uh, but some of them were really, you, you kind of had to step back for a second and, and realize how, how tough some people have like it. Like you said, from Ukraine. And, yeah. And it all started because of a name mishap. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of crazy, too. Yeah. So a lot of good history there. But